I love outputting things into CSV files, only to read it back in a few lines later. It feels so much worse than storing things in global variables. I think it comes from how I used to be so confused by files and file systems. How do you get from comma-separated values to the grid in Excel? When I found out that Mac, Linux, Windows, any version, anytime, anywhere, all their files are compatible, TXT, CSV, JSON, I got drunk with power. Whereas before I struggled to convert JPEG into PNG, now I create thousands of files daily, just because I can. The code I'm going to show you isn't pretty, but it works. I will show you how to not only get all the StatCast data ever, or at least the metrics the Major League Baseball shares, but also how to use that data to make new and interesting metrics that could be useful for fantasy baseball. Today, as MLB transitions towards a high-speed camera-only model for generating on-field data, the StatCast data that has been generated using stereoscopic camera systems and Doppler radars is becoming outdated. But perhaps you might use these StatCast metrics to make your own camera-only system to compete with Hawkeye. Even though I can't get you the digital binaries that are probably necessary to shift towards camera-only, there's got to be something valuable combining HD game footage and exit velocity labels. This isn't radar data. This is metrics created out of the radar data. But maybe you can use it to do something like Tesla skipping straight to camera only full self-driving without ever using radar. Anyway, let's get to the code. Import StatCast from Pi Baseball. Import Pandas, Math, and CSV. From Funk Tools, import Reduce. Next, there is a list of months and years that will be iterated over, and the data collected from StatCast for these months will be stored in the list DFS variable. Pi Baseball will send you all of the StatCast data for whatever time interval you request, but I've found it will mess up almost every time for large queries, unless you break the queries down into months. This will, of course, net you a list of data frames, but Pandas solves this easily with the concat function. Then I drop duplicates just in case there's a duplicate row somewhere, like an empty row or something. And then I store this nearly 3 gigabyte data frame into a CSV file. Now I'm going to store this data frame into a variable called batter StatCast. I'm going to limit this data frame to just a few interesting columns, and we're going to drop any rows that have missing data. Those rows with descriptions other than hit into play, and we're also going to drop all rows with launch speeds lower than 45, because those were likely bunts. Next we define a function which will return an index value in a list, and we immediately map this function to our data frame, because we don't need the full game date, only the year. This method is a very efficient, fast way to update a column in a data frame. Then we create two empty columns in the data frame for our statistics that we're going to create. This next part is a little confusing. None of the next few lines overwrite or change our data frame. Each line that has group by in it is creating a new group by object. The first group by object is used to group by the launch speed column of the no bunts data frame by batter and then by game date. And then to each group of launch speeds that have been separated by the player ID and then separate again by the year, we're going to simply find the average. The next few lines all do the same thing but for the other columns of data. The batter year group variable is the entire data frame grouped by batter and year. Next we find all the unique batters and years throughout the data frame, and we iterate over these values. We made the batter year group variable so that we could use the get group function out of pandas, which will give us the groups we want while we iterate over batters and years. Then finally, for each batter and for each year, we're going to store in our previously empty columns the average of the top 5 and 10% batted ball launch speeds. The XYZ variable is used to rename some columns. We use the same group by technique as before in order to get the median launch speeds and angles, again for each player and each year. Finally, we're going to put all our group by objects into a list, and because these are group by objects, we use the reduce function to merge these data frames. Then we read in a data frame of player IDs and names because the StatCast data only has player IDs. And then we use reduce again in order to merge the names into our data frame to go with the player IDs. And we clean up the extra column of player IDs by deleting the column MLB ID. Then we just rename some columns, drop the duplicates, and write the whole data frame to a CSV file. This is a much smaller data frame than before because it is only a year, a name, a player ID, and a few columns of data. The number of rows is the number of years multiplied by the number of players. Okay, so that was our new statistics. Next we're going to do park factors. So we're going to read from our original nearly 3 gigabyte data frame. We're going to narrow down the columns, drop rows containing empty values, and eliminate all the rows where the hit distance is less than 250, because that couldn't possibly be a home run. The next line, we take the launch direction column and apply this function that will give us the actual launch direction from home plate. 
The StatCast data is a little too raw. Next, we define and apply some simple functions. The label Homer function will read the events column in our data frame and overwrite the column with ones wherever the column read home run and a zero everywhere else. The field function will read the launch direction column and remove values that indicate the ball was hit into foul territory. Now we find all the unique launch angles, years, and home teams and create an empty list, list DFS. Now we iterate over each unique launch angle, year, and home team and create a new data frame for each of these sets of values. We concatenate this list of data frames, rename some columns, and delete the column named index. Finally, we're going to iterate over our years list once more and write one data frame to a CSV file per year. Each CSV file is then titled by its year and it will contain the same data that StackCast contains, except the values will be updated to be relative to home plate and to contain launch angles that make a little more sense, plus the label for a home run. Now we have a list of these data frames with our clean launch angles and home run labeled events for each year. We create an empty list called ListDF. We iterate over our list of files and store our data frames into our list df variable. We create a variable year and set it to 2015. Now we iterate over our list of data frames, create an empty list called rows data, a new group by object for each data frame, and we also get all the unique launch directions and venues and store them in list variables to be iterated over. For each venue, for each launch direction in one degree increments, we get some data about what was barely a home run and what was barely not a home run. Finally, we store this data in CSV files, one per year, each file containing data which can tell us how far a ball must be hit to be a home run in each stadium in each year. As our last step, we're going to add names to our data that can be used to calculate accurate park factors. We iterate over each year for each year grabbing the yearly park factor data. We use reduce again in order to merge the names into a data frame variable called final df. Then we just clean up the data frames and write them to CSV files once more. One final thing, an appeal to Major League Baseball. Make your new StatCast data available to the public instead of just to major league clubs. If you make that sweet, sweet camera-only tracking data available to the public, you open up doors to a future where little leaguers don't have to pay umpire fees or put up with inconsistent strike zones. The Basketball Referee smartphone app is coming soon, and once that happens, baseball might never recover. The sooner MLB opens up access to StatCast, the sooner we can measure the distance of our home runs during batting practice, the speed and break of our pitches in the backyard the sooner a group of kids can get together and play organized baseball without the league and the umpire and only a couple smartphones to call balls and strikes, safer out, warning track, or over the imaginary fence.